This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, Biden's enabling of Hamas's terror against Israel. With us this evening and back by popular demand, Barry Newsbaum, the founder of the American Truth Project and the author of the new book, Because You Asked. Barry, welcome back to the show. Jamie, it's such a pleasure to be back with you, my brother. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you back during these very uh, frightening times, I think is a word we can use. Barry, we want to talk about how the Dems and the left once again are aiding and abetting evil, aiding and abetting terrorism. Um, before we get to that, let's just start in general. What is happening in Israel? Oh boy, it's, it's bad and it's getting worse, Jamie. Um, I had sent you over some commentary earlier today, suggested what we could talk about. And at the time I mentioned there were 1,500 rockets fired from the Gaza Strip against civilian population centers in Israel. I need to correct that. I was wrong. It's now well over 2,000 missiles. Now, these are not harmless firecrackers. Each one of these can blow up a house, a bus, a school, a civic center, a judicial center, etc. They are massive explosions when they land. Over 2,000 have been fired, all against civilian targets. Jamie, this is literally the biggest crime against humanity, a violation of all international law, including the Geneva Conventions. And while we sit here on the air talking about it, most of Israel from the north all the way to the south is underground in bomb shelters, fearing for their lives. That's what's going on in Israel. And while that's going on in Israel, the world overall um, indoctrinated, of course, self-intoxicated with this indoctrination, they're actually is always condemning Israel, which is the real victim in all of this. Yeah, it's really amazing. You know, it, it would be as if you watch the bank next door get robbed and uh, the press reports, uh, alleged robbery at Bank of America, tellers are blamed and are encouraged to be nicer to their customers. Um, mm -hmm. That's literally what's happening. Israel okay. is now striking back very heavily mm -hmm. and the audacity of the world press and even more so the world governments who say both sides should just simmer down is insane. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody comes just... to kill you, you don't write them a letter. Absolutely. And look, just these lies continue over and over again. This big lie of how Israel somehow took somebody's land and the Palestinians had their land. You know, uh, you know, taken away, and Israel had expelled the. You know, all of this is just lies. We've gone over this so many times. Those of us truth tellers, you know, after the First World War, we know that the the land was just carved up from the Turkish Empire. We know that the Arabs were offered their own state in in 1947. We know that they had rejected it. Um, it just, these lies continue, correct? That Israel has somehow taken somebody's land and, and is in on somebody's land, right? Yeah, there's a little background that's really important, Jamie. Um, the latest violence, which is now literally a war, don't call it anything else because it's not, um, is being justified by the Palestinian side because there's a court case in Jerusalem over an eviction of several families from some housing that they obtained illegally some years ago that were Jewish homes that were confiscated by Arabs and the Jews want it back. That's a cover-up. The cover-up that they're trying to hide from public view is there were supposed to be Arab elections in the West Bank. And the dictator for life, Mahmoud Abbas, who's the president of the Palestinian Authority, canceled the elections again. When I say again, Jamie, he was elected 
for a four year term some 16 years ago or so, and has never had an election since. He decided he owns the Palestinian Authority. Why? Because it's a great, great money-making venture in the, well, in the model of his predecessor and, and his mentor, um, Yasser Arafat, who they think died one of the richest men in the world from all the money he had stolen from the EU, the UN, the United States, and the Arab Gulf states. So Mahmoud Abbas, who's really close to the end of his life, wants to go out in a coffin from the presidential palace rather than voted out of office. Because, you know, democracy, that's for the little people. We don't believe in it in the Palestinian Authority. So how do you distract your people? Well, start a war. And so they did. Yeah, and we know that Abbas, well, there's lots to say, but I'll say this one thing. Abbas pays millions of dollars to terrorists who kill Israeli civilians. Yeah, and I, let me brag for a minute on that subject about our 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. Mm. He had the chutzpah to say to Mahmoud Abbas in the White House, Jamie, stop paying terrorists to kill Jews or I'll cut off American money. What did Mahmoud Abbas do in the Oval Office? He looked at the President of the United States. He said, I promise. Got back to Ramallah, where his offices are, and, and basically flipped off the President of the United States and up the payments to people who kill Jews. And for those viewers of the Glazov gang that don't know it, the pay for play, the pay for slay program is literally one of the largest parts of their budget. They pay Arabs to kill Jews. And if you get killed in doing it, your family makes more money than a doctor, a lawyer, a government official, or an engineer for life. And they buy you a house and they take care of you. So? Hmm, I wonder if this has anything to do with the religion of peace. Now, look, uh, Barry, you brought up Trump, so let's get to this here. Trump, what a heroic, noble man, what a great president he was. He cut off and froze money, he froze the funding to this death cult. He stopped it. And we didn't see what we are seeing now. And so, you know, I wager that if Trump was in office right now, this would not be happening. What happened is Biden and the Dems get in. Couple things here. We know that the Democrats, who's Biden surrounded by? The voices, the noises, people like Rashida Tlaib, people like Ilhan Omar, that's the ideology there. He resumes the funding. And uh, of course, there's, in, in my view, there's some wink winks going on here. We know that there's a deep anti Israeli hostility among the Dems and the Biden uh, people. This is really just Obama's third administration. And uh, one thing I'm thinking about, all those rockets that are killing and maiming and terrorizing Israeli civilians, who pays for those rockets? Well, hey, the money that Biden now unfroze and is sending, it's all interconnected. I would say that the Biden administration has blood on its hands. What do you think? Extremely intuitively well said, Jamie Glazov. The money comes from two sources, Iran, who we can't wait to give billions to. And we don't know for sure, but supposedly some money's already been transferred. They make no bones about it, and it's not a secret. They are funding the missile program. And get this, Jamie, last month, Biden gave between two and $300 million to the Palestinians with no strings attached. And the Palestinian leadership talks about the fact the money is coming and we're building bombs and missiles. It doesn't take more than like a fourth grade education to put the pieces together. This is 100% on Biden's desk. Let me add one more thing. This will blow you out of your seat. I waited all day today for condemnation of the missiles being launched from Hamas against our closest ally, Israel. Biden said two things. Number one, Israel has the right to defend itself. Okay, that was pretty good, kind of low key, 
but pretty good. Not the way Trump would have said it, which is stop now or I'll send the sixth fleet. He would have said something like that while he's moving the carrier groups towards Israel and the Palestinians. But the thing he said, second, Jamie, scares the crap out of me. He said, I would like to see a reduction in the number of missiles flying out of Gaza targeted against Israeli population centers. Now, there's been over 2,000, Jamie, and each one can blow up a bus, a house, an apartment building, a bank, whatever. Biden didn't say, stop it now or else. He just said, hey, kill a little less number of Jews, send a little less number of rockets, and I'll be happy. So if you're the Palestinians, the gangster Muslim theocracy that is running Gaza, what would you do? You'd go, well, let's just shoot a few less. It'll make the president of the United States happy and we'll keep getting money. He didn't tell us to stop it. He just told us to send less missiles. You know, just kill, kill a few less Jews, you know, kill a few of them, just not so many. Um, you're absolutely right, Barry. Let's just picture um, rockets coming from Canada and Mexico into Los Angeles or Detroit or, or uh, you know, somewhere in Dallas. This, this would not be tolerated. It would not be tolerated, arguably, in any country in the world. But when it comes to Jewish people in Israel, they have to tolerate it according to the international community, right? Yeah, it, let me ask you a question, just hypothetically considering your background. If the Ukraine or Belarus sent one missile, one, into Moscow, what would Putin do? One missile. Absolutely, absolutely. Belarus would be a parking lot. The Ukraine would not be occupiable for a generation. He would send in the bombers and the Spetsnaz and it would be over. Now, 2,000 some number have launched in the last four days into Israel. And I don't just mean into the fields and starting fires in the crops in the south of Israel. They're targeting Jerusalem. They're targeting Tel Aviv. They're targeting Eshdod. They're targeting the port in Eshkelon. And get this, they have shot missiles at the international airport, Ben Gurion, which is now closed. And the Hamas leadership has said, we will shoot down international jumbo jets. This is a war crime of international proportion. And the UN, the EU, and every government run by a sane individual, starting with ours, ought to be condemning this from the rooftops. And what do you hear? Crickets. Absolutely. Um, Barry, we got to go. We got to bring you back here to talk about this and many other things. Israel was not on its own with Trump. Trump was had Israel's back. Now Israel is all on its own. Um, if they were, if the Israelis were calling you, asking you for your advice, what would you be telling them to do? I'll tell you the same thing I told the Israelis I've been talking to for the last two days. Do not leave Gaza with Hamas still in control and the ability to cause terror. It, they started it. The Israelis need to finish it once and for all. I think it's, I think it's important to mention. And the, I think and, it's, and, the, and the Palestinians will be safe. I think it's important to mention how all the peaceniks and the left back uh, in 2007, 2008, when Gaza was given up, were saying, oh, just give them Gaza and there will be peace and everything will be okay. Now look what's happened, right? Tragic mistake when Ariel Sharon became prime minister and thought he could trade land for peace. Mm. There had never been a rocket fired from Gaza until the IDF withdrew the troops from Gaza. And as yeah. soon as they left and the radical maniacs took over, it's against it's a gangster theocracy of radical Islam like the world has never seen. It is a hellhole. And quite frankly, it's got to be stopped. And the only people to do it are the IDF. And they're there as we speak right now. 
Thank you so much, Barry. Um, our audience cannot get enough of Barry Newsbaum. And Barry Newsbaum is a genius and a hero who has a new book out. Everybody wants to order it. Where do they go? Uh, the, thank you so much for the <laughs> great, great PR. I so appreciate you. It's called Because You Asked. It's about uh, my take on current events and what I think the right actions should and could be. And it's on Amazon. Just go to Amazon.com and look up Because You Ask or look up Barry Newsbaum. You get the book. You can order it. It's just okay. fairly cheap. And uh, tell me what you think about it after you get a good read. And everybody should be going to the American Truth Project, right? I would appreciate it. Anyone that hasn't subscribed yet, you can get our content for free, Jamie. Just take out your cell phone and text the word truth in the message box and send it to the number 88202, push send. It signs you up for free. You get all of our content for free. And you'll spread the truth about what's what, going on in America. And what's the website? American Truth project.org. Okay, fantastic. Last question, maybe the most important question. Barry, what is your secret to being so cool? A lot of people ask me that. Hanging out with Jamie Glazov. <laughs> <Duh. laughs> okay, Barry, thank you very much. Um, thank you for your nobility. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your truth telling during these frightening and scary times. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you. And thank you for joining the Glazoff gang this evening. Please keep in mind that all of this YouTube persecution of the Glazoff gang, we've just had enough of it. We're over at Rumble now. Go to Rumble and search the Glazoff gang and subscribe to us there and click instant notifications. We'll see you soon. Good night.